Hello everybody, Rosemary here from the Sweet Poppy Design Team. Welcome to our inspirational day over on the Simply Sweet Poppy Stencils um, page. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the demonstration so far and I'm looking forward to sharing mine with you. So today I'd like to share this card with you using one of the old stencils, a hummingbird which I love and the new um, tulip um, stamp. So I'll show you how I made this card. So to start with I've got my 14 centimeter or five and a half inch square card. Um, whichever card you prefer to use when you're inking is, is you know what, what you should use. I'm using um, a, a 300 GSM stamping card. So for this card I've just got my Worn Lipstick Distress Ink and I'm inking up my brush and I'm just going to ink up some areas of my card and I'm gently using circular motions to do this and I'm going to do all the pink first because it's a background and I'm going to use some stencils it doesn't really need to be like fully colored I don't want too much color oh, carry on with the pink let's do everywhere we're going to do so I'm going to do that top corner there I'm going to do a little bit here come down there to give a bit of contrast between the green And then I'm going to carry on with this bit here. I'm going to come down towards the right hand side of my card. I hope that's coming up nice and clear for you on the video. There's a little bit down in this corner. And I'm going to bring that down to there like that. A little bit down towards the left on that side. Okay, so that's my pink. It's not going to be exactly the same as the other one because they never are. It's hard to do a background exactly the same, but you can get them very similar. So I'm going to use my... Lucky Clover as my next colour. And I'm just going to fill in the gaps that I've left so far. Same again, just ink up your brush, give it a little tap off. And then fill in your white areas that you've left. quite like this Lucky Clover. I think it was a lovely idea to have an inspirational day. That is my background ink I'm still going to use. I'm just going to wipe up that ink that's there so far. With a little bit of water. And then I'm going to get my first stencil and I use this stencil <coughs> over the pink. So I'm just going to lay it down over my stamp and then I'm just going to brush over all the pink area. I'm not inking up my stencil, my brush for this bit. I'm just using the ink that was left on the brush, which is quite a bit. As you can see, it leaves just a nice little pattern. Let me bring that up a bit closer. Can you see that? So, and then I'm going to do the same on this bit of pink here. If you want it to stand out more, you could add a little bit of extra ink. Totally up to you. But this is just my way of doing things. And for the grit, now this stencil is called um, 
lost my piece of paper. This stencil is called the Floral Trellis. It's one of the newer ones, it's very nice. And now on the green, I'm going to use Harmony. The Harmony. These are back plates, they're called back plates, they're quite large and they cover a piece of A5 card nicely. So, and I'm just gonna do the same. I did dip this in the ink. And I'm just going over my green areas and that's that part done. So I'm just now going to just brush over my pink again, just to blend the two colours together a bit more. There we go. That's that done. <clears throat> so that's that done. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our stamp. So we're using the tulip stamp. So I'm just going to lay my stamp where I want to stamp it. Now, I did heat emboss. I did heat emboss my stamp, so we're going to do that as well. So I'm just bringing my stamp down to the very edge of the card and I just want to make sure that my hummingbird will fit nicely and I've also got to fit in my sentiment stamp. So I'm using my hummingbird and I just want to make sure because on my other card it came off the edge just a fraction at the bottom here so because I, I want to fit in my sentiment as well so I think that that's ideal so I'm going to get my stamping platform I'm going to place that down oops I'm going to place my card right in the corner. And I'm going to place my stamp about there. Perfect. And I'm using Versafine Clear Nocturne. That's my ink. And I'm just going to chuck over <laughs> my stamp. It flicks out my fingers. Pressing down. And there we go. So, as you can see, it's a beautiful stamp. Stamp's lovely. Then I'm going to get my embossing powder. This is crystal clear embossing powder. Just checking because I didn't use my powder. I'm just checking that there's no little no, that's fine. So and I'm just gonna put the lid on that. And then I'm going to heat emboss stamped image
and there we go that's all embossed just checking that i haven't missed any areas no that's lovely that's fine and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our magnetic sheet now because we're going to ink through our hummingbird stencil so i'm lining up the beak with my flower roughly where I had it with the other one, which is roughly about that little bit there. And I'm just gonna place a piece of paper over that hummingbird, because I don't want to accidentally get any of that. And I'm going to use Worn Lipstick Distress Oxide for my hummingbird and I have my worn lipstick distress oxide brush and I'm just going to ink up my brush dab it off a little bit and then I'm gently going to ink my bird I use the oxide because I thought it would go over the green areas a bit more I don't think I've ever seen a pink hummingbird, but it's our creativity that brings us all these ideas to do with all these stencils and everything. Making sure the whole thing is covered. There we go. So we've now finished with our oxide. So we can remove our stencil. And there is our bird at the moment. I just want to make sure that my sentiment fits in that area there yes i've got my measurements right <laughs> that's good so now we are going to color our flower and i've used sweet poppy brush pens now I use I like to use a paintbrush with my pens. I can't I don't when I'm colouring I don't really like to use so I'm going to use brighter pink and I'm going to use the green. I haven't labelled my colours, I don't really know what they are, but I'll show you the ends of the tips. I must label them. Must, that must be my next my next job. So I'm going to put a little bit of water on my mat, and I'm going to do the flower itself first. So I'm just going to put my ink on there, and I'm going to get my wet my brush just a little bit, and just paint. Paint my flower. You can use the brushes that are in the pack. I don't really know why I didn't really. I usually do.
So when you use your paint, your um, ink from your brushes with water on another brush, they actually come out a bit paler. The one I did before, I did straight from straight from the brush and I'm probably with a little bit too pink. So that's why I've decided. You can use a white pen to put highlights on if you wish. So that's the flower part done. So now I'm going to do the stem in the same way with my green. I'm using quite a thin brush. I'm going to spray another little bit of water on there. And I'm just going to paint my leaves. And the stem. I find colouring in just little simple things like this very relaxing. Takes your mind off loads of other things that you're thinking about. You can just concentrate on you for a few minutes. I do like this green, I think it's very pretty. So I'm going to give another layer and see if we can darken up these outside edges to give some contrast to the leaves. bit of contrast to the leaves we could do the same with the flower actually just give a little bit another bit of color to the flower what did I just use we could darken up these in the background just so they stand out a little bit more have a design team member who works magic with these pens Susan Bradney she is absolutely such a beautiful colorist so there we go it's highlighted that a little bit more in the background so I hope you like it so far let's clean up our mess Otherwise, I get ink everywhere and I get it all over my card when I've finished it and then I have to start all over again. It's so annoying. 
when you do things like that. Right, so there we are at the moment. So we've, we're actually nearly finished our card. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight with my... I'm going to use a gold pen this time to give a bit more. So you might be able to see it a bit better. So I'm using my gold pen to highlight my hummingbird. So I will actually fast forward this part of the video. So that's our hummingbird done. I don't know if you can see that sparkle, but it does sparkle. So now I'm just gonna do the tulip as well. So all I'm gonna do on the tulip is just highlight the lines. Amy's done a wonderful job designing these stamps. So well, that's that's our hummingbird and our tulip finished. So the next item we need to do is to stamp our sentiment. Now I spent ages looking for a sentiment that looked right, and this was the one I found. It's not a sweet poppy stencil one, but I actually don't know who it's by because it was just in a in my box of like random stamps that I've acquired, but I did like the verse on it. So I'm going to pick it up with my, I am, I'm going to put it where I think it should be. And I need to make sure it's straight. Oh, let's put my card down. And I'm going to pick up that stamp. And I'm going to just going to place my piece of acetate down, hold that in place, and then I'm going to ink up my stamp so I can see if it's going to be straight. Because I don't want to ruin my card by having a wonky sentiment. So I always stamp on acetate first. There we go. I'm quite happy with that. 
that looks straight to me. So I shall just go with that as it is. I learnt this technique a long time ago off a, a lady called Martine Smith and I've used it ever since for my and lots of my cards that I really sometimes I forget and I always do it wonky if I forget so now I tend to use it all the time. I want it a bit darker, so I'm going to ink out again. So, but you could put whatever sentiment stamp you like. Anniversary, birthdays. And that's our, that's our card done. So I then mounted it onto a five and three quarter centimeter inch card or 15, no, 14 and a half centimeters. So, and what I did was I got my pink and I used the Harmony back plate. I got my pink ink brush and I just done the edge I might need some more ink on that now just to give a little bit of a pattern to the back of the card all it needs is just a little bit of interest at the back and then we glue this down glue this down onto our paper lining it up so that it's nice and even all the way around and then I've got a 15 centimeter or six inch blank card to mount this up onto to refill my glue pot Oop, let's make sure it's opening properly yep and place that on there like that hold it down for a few minutes And there we go, that's our finished card. So this was the first one. And this is the one I've just done. I hope you're enjoying the um, inspirational day. Okay, and i like to wish you all a very happy holiday. And um, enjoy the coronation next week. See you all soon. Bye.